Hey everybody, thanks so much for tuning in. This is Justin with Zounds, and we are here with a, another edition of Zounds Live. Uh, this time we have a very cool concept. We're gonna be discussing how to use a compressor. So for all of you kind of studio junkies or engineers out there, um, or even beginners, this one is uh, for you. So again, we're gonna be talking about compression, and compression is a very difficult to describe concept, so I'll do my best to uh, describe this in terminology we can all kind of uh, relate to, but uh, through this process, I hope we can uh, have a better understanding of what to do and how to use it. Um, so uh, over here to my right, you'll notice I've got two products here with me today. One of them is the DSM Humboldt uh, Clear Comp Compressor, which is very cool. It's this little pedal right here. Uh, I believe they uh, refer to it as a dynamic threshold compressor. And then we have the Lindell Audio Lin76, which is racked up right here, this pretty little thing right here. So uh, that is uh, going to be discussed uh, further in the stream. And I'm going to be feeding tracks here on my computer over into it. And we're going to have some fun kind of hearing what that sounds like when we uh, um, get to, uh, uh, yeah, just, just uh, experience the 1176 sound live here. So that should be fun later. And uh, as always, everybody, feel free to drop me a line in the chat. I've got it pulled up here, and I'll be happy to answer any questions as we go through the process. So what is compression? So like I said, it's a very difficult to describe concept, but compression at its core is a mixing uh, tool and recording tool, and uh, it's going to be uh, basically adjusting the dynamic range of a source that is the most commonly used uh, application of compression is adjusting a dynamic range. So for instance, if you have maybe a bass track and you notice when you see it recorded, it's got a bunch of peaks or transients. Uh, if you use a compressor, you can soften those kind of pops and bumps that you might get on tracks. You can expand the sound of sources that maybe seem weak by taking quieter sections and actually making them louder via compression, which is also a cool trick. So there's more than just squashing uh, tracks uh, uh, with compression. You can do a whole lot with it. Um, one of my favorite things to use a compressor for when I'm mixing is to actually perceivably bump something out in the front of a mix with compression, which again is a great trick if you're trying to get something out front, like for instance, a vocal track. So common use of a compressor is to compress it, get everything nice and leveled evenly, push the vocal out front, that way it can sit up on top of a mix and not get buried underneath um, you know, loud parts of a song, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, without getting too deep into that concept right now, we will get to that later. Let's just talk about the concept of a compressor and how to use it. So let's go over to the 1176. This is a good visual aid as we're talking about this really quick. So uh, if you see, there's two controls here, an input and an output control. Uh, very simple, and that's why we uh, went with this one. It's a, it's a very, very easy to understand concept. Input is actually going to be your input gain there, but what it is is essentially your compression control, how much compression you're going to be introducing. So this is going to be a, like a threshold control. If you guys are out there familiar with what a threshold is on a compressor, this is going to adjust that. So it's basically your overall level of compression. As you can guess, the output is the um, final master level of the signal once it passes through the compression. Just how loud uh, you want it, that's what this output knob is going to adjust. And then if you go over here, you see attack and release. Now for people who might be uh, not familiar, like those beginners out there that aren't familiar with compression, those are in incredibly important controls because that's going to adjust our threshold and how the compressor is going to respond. So um, I'm just going to speak in you know, explain like I'm five terms here. So if it, uh, uh, if you guys have further questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to be going bare bones here. Attack is the initial uh, speed at which the compressor will kick in once it receives a source, like maybe a bass track like we were talking about. So the attack adjusts how fast the compression will kick in once it kind of exceeds a limit or a threshold that you set. So let's talk about that. Controls over here, for instance, uh, if you were to turn the attack faster, for instance, the compressor will kick in quicker. So once it perceives a source uh, that exceeds where you want it to go and goes louder, for instance, that compressor will kick in uh, faster and clamp down on that source uh, earlier. And that's what happens with a fast attack time, for instance, like when I turn up the knob on a, uh, this 1176. But if you want a slow attack, that gives time for a source like maybe a drum 
to be heard before the compressor kicks in and tries to pull the volume down. So essentially like I like you mixing a snare drum or a kick drum. You really want that initial like pop to be heard from maybe a snare drum. So what you do is usually set the attack a little bit slower. So you really hear that initial crack and then the compressor kicks in and you can soften the sound, but you still get that like punchiness to it. So 1176s are really fun for that. Um, but that would be the benefit of something like a slow attack versus a fast attack. Now, I know I'm going quickly, but let's go to the release. The release is going to be how quickly the compression returns back to the normal level there. Or in other words, uh, once uh, the compressor kicks in, the release time is going to be how quickly it returns back to the normal level before it was compressed. So I hope that makes sense out there. Um, but by manipulating the times of the release and the attack concurrently, you can get very cool effects. You can also have very unusual effects when done incorrectly, but uh, hopefully the stream today will alleviate any of those problems. So besides that, let's check this out. We got a ratio control. Ratio is the amount of compression, compression versus you know, uncompressed signal. So it's basically that ratio of how much is being kind of fed into it. So in this case, we have a four ratio or four to one. And then we have eight, 12, or 20. And then we also have a um, all buttons in mode where you can actually concurrently press all of the buttons. We'll get to that later. But this ratio control will be basically the extent to how much you want it to be compressed there. So uh, typically when you're using an 1176, a lot of people hang out on the four to one. Myself, I like four or eight uh, a lot. And uh, that's usually where you're probably gonna be um, utilitarian uh, using that uh, device. So. We'll get to that later though, we'll explore that more. And then finally, we got a meter section over here. So uh, GR is just gain reduction. That's the standard um, metering for this. You'll notice this fancy, fancy uh, uh, VU meter right here. Uh, the GR is gain reduction, so it's going to actually tell us in decibels how much we're reducing the gain via our compression, how much compression is being applied in decibels. That's right here. But you also have these numbers, plus four and plus eight. That's a, uh, another metering uh, um, uh, that's available to you if you'd like to use it that way. So so that's about it. Now let's take a look at this clear comp. The clear comp is kind of a fun pedal version of exactly what the 1176 is. You'll even notice pretty much almost exactly the same controls. We got a master level, which is just like our output knob, right? Master level, just how loud you want everything. We've also got this knob, the compression. It acts like our input knob. Because remember earlier I said the input is how much compression you want. That's what this is. Literally just turn it up, you get more. Turn it down, you get less. It introduces um, some interesting uh, gain though, which is cool. So, uh, and then moving on, check it out. We got attack and release uh, right here. Only difference is that the attack and release uh, on this pedal is drastically more uh, aggressive than on the 1176. You have more of a range uh, for more attack and more longer release with this pedal. So you can get some cool kind of artificial sounding and very extreme exaggerated sounds with it, which is cool. Uh, and then uh, my favorite, a blend control. So you can kind of crank things and then just kind of dial back the blend and uh, make everything sound usable instead of just totally over the top. Fire it on. Uh, by the way, I'm playing this Les Paul Standard through the Soldano uh, Slow 100. So just for reference there, I'll try to give you a dirty and clean tones with it. So, But here's our compressor. So I have it set fairly, fairly decently compressed. Um, and I'm going to pull the ratio down. I have it cranked right now. But let's pull the ratio down and just kind of hear a general uh, tone with it, kind of a little bit cleaner there. So... so. it kind of off here. So you'll notice right away that the compressor tends to tighten things up, but it also introduces a cool amount of gain. You'll notice the compressor knob, like I mentioned before, it's just like our input knob on this uh, big guy back here. And so that introduces cool amounts of saturation. So check it out. It 
actually use it in your gain staging with your pedal board to kind of get some cool effects with uh, saturation, which I love using with the 1176s and uh, this Lin 76 here. So you can kind of add a little bit extra grit. So let's dial it back a little bit. We'll dial it back and keep the level control about where it's at. There we go. Now we're not really introducing too much gain in it anymore. But compressor, why would you use one for a guitar? Let's talk about that before I dive in. Why would you use one on a guitar? Well, for the same reasons that we would use one in the studio. Maybe you're playing uh, kind of funk and you want something to smooth out all of your transients or those pops or loud moments in your playing. So of course the compressor is the perfect tool for that. But if you don't want to use it for maybe funk playing or whatever, uh, I've had great success uh, kind of pairing them for use with overdrives. There are other pedals that maybe are a little bit finicky there. You can put one before or after and get different coloration effects by introducing it before your drive pedals, which again will kind of limit those peaks there. So when it hits a distortion pedal or an overdrive, you're kind of getting the ideal kind of saturation point right there, which is a very cool trick if you want to kind of just tighten up your tones there. There's a million other uses for it. But those two are ones that stick out. Um, this pedal also works great with bass guitar as well. So it's very, very cool to, uh, to just feed this into a bass. It works just as well. Um, but let's go to this threshold uh, switch in the, uh, the middle of this pedal. I have not discussed that yet, but the threshold switch is very cool. It has a low, high, and a kind of a mid uh, switch uh, setting. I'm in the mid. That covers pretty much all the uses that you'd normally have, guitars, basses. You're going to feed it through that middle um, kind of compression, very general. But you might be thinking, okay, what about the low and the high threshold? What's that? Well, low is good for maybe single coils or vintage pickups that don't really produce a lot of output. Throw it on the low setting, and it will adjust the threshold of the pedal to uh, account for that so you won't have to just crank your settings to get it to sound right. Same for high, of course, when you're playing high output pickups, uh, you know, uh, maybe some like, you know, if you've got metal guitars out there, have a bunch of high output pickups, put it on high and it will kind of adjust the threshold as well. So you don't have to go messing with your settings. So it's a really, really handy thing uh, that's great for like immediate um, adjustments there. So anyways, I've got it on the mid and my ratio is somewhere in the middle. I'm guessing that's probably more of like a, probably like a four to one, three to one at this point. So uh, uh, speaking of ratios, so let's just kind of, let's hear it again. Let's hear that pedal. So fairly light compression. Let's just hear how it sounds. I'll crank the attack, slow it down. So it's getting nice and snappy there. If you kind of increase the gain of the amp there. Very subtle, but it's also a good feel thing as well, but it definitely smooths out a lot of those peaks. Sometimes I joke around and uh, I say that a compressor just makes you sound like a better guitar player. So <laughs> that's that's one use if you just want to sound like a better guitar player. So let's start uh, adjusting more extreme settings though, guys. So if we crank that uh, ratio control, it's going to introduce a lot more um, compression into the uh, uh, mix there. So let's do that. And then how about this? Let's kind of jack up that compression knob here, attenuate it a little bit, and we'll see what we get. So super squashed, keep the release long. You hear that pumping there, that, that popping there, because the attack is set like that and it's such an extreme setting. That's nah, so when you really start getting some, some cool artifacts there. So let's put that attack down even further so I can show you guys another exaggeration there. is a lot, uh, a lot less tight, so here's it with it on. So 
it's, it's kind of hard to hear sometimes, but you'll definitely feel it when you're playing it. You can get a lot of tightness on that. So... There you go. Now you're really hearing that. You can hear it just pulling, grabbing so hard to keep that uh, uh, dynamic range down as I'm playing harder. So. So very cool tool. That's at an extreme setting. So you're usually not going to really be doing stuff like that unless you really want to. Otherwise, there is plenty of manageability by the blend control. So let's check this out. I, same settings, pretty extreme. Pull the blend control back. You could still get some cool sounds while making it much more manageable. So like maybe go to like 50% blend. Now that's a usable sound. And it sounds awesome with low stuff too. It's great. So quick blend control adjustment, and it moves a crazy sound into a completely usable one. So I love it. Cannot stress enough how great it is to have a blend. Cool. So moving on here, let's go to kind of like just cranked uh, input gain. So you can hear how distortion can get added through this circuit. So check it out. So here's that little crank. Awesome, just pretty subtle, but you can get just another little layer. All right, guys, so without uh, uh, spending uh, too much time on each aspect, I'm gonna go over to the Lin 76 now, and then we're gonna come back to this at the end. But Let's go check out this rack unit. I'm sure for all of you guys out there who may have hardware, uh, this is the most kind of intimidating is getting into really messing with outboard gear and everything. But uh, fear not as it's super easy and it's just really fun to experiment with something with this little controls. That's the beauty of the 1176. Super simple. It's just kind of one of those use your ears. You can find the sweet spot easily and you're golden. So, so let's go to this again. I have my computer pulled up here. And I have a couple uh, kind of demos that we cut uh, quite a while back. And uh, I'm just going to feed some of the overhead microphones with the drum tracks. And I'll show you what it sounds like when we get an 1176 compressor going. So got my screen pulled up right here. Uh, let's go to just one side because obviously it's a mono compressor. I cannot feed a stereo signal in. So let's go to one side and I'm going to pull this up. We're going to get a new track ready. So I open up a new track because we're going to feed this overhead symbol out into the 1176 and back in again. And this is our cool PreSonus Quantum 2626 interface. Uh, I really love these. They're awesome for outboard gear and plenty of inputs and stuff. So we got the Quantum 2626. I'm feeding it into the third input right here. So I'm gonna pull up a new track and let's just choose input three right here as our source. So now we're gonna record on input three. But we gotta do one thing. Got to tell the computer to send that out to it. So I am going to pull up my uh, fancy in-out plugin, which is a cool little logic feature. Just tells you which input and output source you're using uh, and where it's getting sent out from the interface from and where it is returning back. So I'm going to go set it back up to receive it at input three or so. Anyways, let's go check this out. So officially sending out the symbols and it's going to go through the 1176 so let's see what we get here when we play just a quick sample of this recording and we'll see what we capture so all right hold on one second all right everybody so here is our symbol sound so Let's check out the compressor here. So you'll notice the, um, if we got a camera shot on that, uh, if you'll notice the Lin 76 here, I have it just set at classic kind of 1176 tones, which are, uh, as they always say, 10 and two, it's like a steering wheel. Put the input at 10, and put the output at two. It's usually a good starting point. So I've got it loosely there and we'll see what kind of gain reduction we get. We're shooting for around maybe 
uh, two to five decibels of reduction on this meter right here. So as you can see, there's zero through 20 on the top row. We're shooting for ish around two to five, but I just use my ears and adjust accordingly. That's just a good starting place. So let's check it out. So obviously we're barely touching the needle right now. Let's adjust it so we have more compression. So. All right, so you notice there the needle is dropping to about five or seven after I increased the input. So that's the overall level of compression and our threshold. So let's keep going. Cool, so I think that's already sounding a lot better than it was going in. So let's do a quick sample recording and I might even actually increase a little bit more compression. Let's do a quick sample recording so you guys can kind of hear the quick difference, so. That's probably enough to give you an idea. So let's go uh, isolate our new sound and this is what we get. And let's compare it to the original one that we had before. So obviously there's a big volume discrepancy there because we were cranking the output on the compressor. So let's pull this down we'll give a little bit more unbiased volume comparison. So You just get a lot thicker um, compression on uh, a lot of perceivable thickness there, and it tends to bring out things like cymbals and the snare even when you're feeding it through compression like this. Super cool tricks for drum overheads. But uh, let's do one more thing, which I'm sure people are curious about. For those out there who have an 1176 or always wanted one, there's an old trick that uh, old British engineers really got made popular in the 70s, and that was the all buttons in trick. And this one does it. Uh, they used to just take, the engineers realized if they took the ratio uh, buttons and just pressed all four of them in at once, they can get this insanely high amount of compression. And it also adjusted kind of the internal way in which the compressor worked, which is cool. So, so let's see if I can uh, finagle getting all four buttons here. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit to get it right. Oops. All right, I'm going two hands on this one, guys. <laughs> this always happens. There we go. All right, cool. So I finally got all four buttons in. This is a very popular trick for overhead cymbals, like I'm showing you right now. Absolutely love the way that cymbals sound, especially on big hits. You get these like blooming cymbal sounds. Uh, it's awesome. It's um, it's basically my go-to rock mixing trick. Is that so? Um, so let me uh, arm a new track. We're gonna basically do the same thing. Uh, go to input three as our source, as we did earlier. This time though, uh, we'll see how it sounds when we do the all buttons in trick. So arm this track. All right, let's give a little preliminary taste of it. Hold on one second. Send it out. All right, cool, let's hear it. So you hear how that snare already just starts getting squashed and really pummeled, uh, even on somewhat conservative all button in settings. I'll go back and show you guys again. Listen for the snare. You'll really hear uh, like a, a widening and a punchiness to it that you just don't get on the source recording. So. Very cool. Um, and again, I'm, this is kind of the point is to just smash the hell out of the signal with all buttons in. So I'm going to get a recording and we're going to, we're going to reference that. So.
right, so that's a little quick example. That was just the left side, everybody. Let's go to um, our right side, uh, right side of the symbols, the different microphones. So uh, let's go pop over to this one. And we'll turn this on. We're going to send the right out now. Just because I, I, you guys got to hear when it's in stereo there with the 1176. It's too fun. So, okay, now we're going to record this right side. And then we'll see how this sounds. So, again, I'm going to mute the other ones. And I'm just going to catch this. So bear with me while I set everything up. Okay, cool. This should be working now with the right. And let's disengage the other one. Cool. So here, let's try, let's check this out. Okay, it should be working. All right, cool, so let's record this. And you'll hear it uh, in action with both, so. All right, cool. So give you guys an idea now, because again, this is totally worth it. You can see how easy this is. I'm already feeding several tracks through in real time, so it's super cool. So let's hear what it sounds like. So I love the sound of this stereo 1176 business. So let's disengage everything, make sure we're not feeding it through. We'll mute our source tracks. Now here's our new all buttons in 1176 uh, stereo track. So. So super fat tom sound awesome love it if you um if you want to do what i usually do i'll blend in an all buttons in overhead with a regular symbol too if you still think it's too aggressive blend it in with the original untouched one you can get plenty of toys to play around with but let's go back to the original tone so you guys just heard it with it kind of smashed with the all buttons in sound here's the original so like listen to the character of it especially those toms and the symbols right here check it out there's the original symbol and the toms, but just notice how just the fullness, just aggressiveness you get with uh, sending it through and all buttons in. So here's the all buttons in one now. So yeah, just so many aspects of your overhead symbols can change in very, very great ways so again it's 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 just such a great trick for symbols especially and then blend that in with the rest of your drum mics oh it's, it's just so great I, I i try to like always at least incorporate some sort of uh 1176 compression in the overheads uh, if i can so as you can see guys super easy uh, this thing sounds amazing you don't have to do all buttons in on it there's a million other uh, uses for it among them bass guitar so Let's talk about how you'd use it if you're gonna throw a bass guitar in it. Um, I don't believe I'll have time right now to do that with you guys, but um, uh, essentially the attack and release controls are absolutely crucial. So uh, if you're gonna be using a bass, you might have to adjust this attack and release, but how do you do it? Like which direction is which, people always ask. Which, which way is turning the attack faster or turning the release faster or slower? Yes, it's a little bit confusing since it's not, uh, it doesn't operate the, quite the same way. Uh, but essentially, the uh, 1176 is kind of backwards from the way you'd normally adjust the compressor. The attack control as you rotate it clockwise is going to make the attack time uh, faster. So if you want, like we talked about with the pedal, if you want that clampy, super cutoff sound, then you're going to increase your attack all the way to the right. That's the fastest. Um, if you really want to let some like transients through, like with drums, and you want that pop, you want the punchiness of something without it being squashed, you're going to want to rotate that attack knob back down to the left. Same thing with the release. Faster release as you turn it all the way clockwise. So if you find that you want something to sound bigger or have more sustain to it with the compressor, you want it to release slower. So you're going to want to turn the uh, uh, release knob again down. You want it back to the left. 
fast release right, fast attack to the right, normal to the left. So again, I, uh, it still is, is a really great idea to just do, again, like the input output, 10 and two, again, is a good place to start. 10 attack, two on the release, start there, and then you can also mess, uh, mess around with it. But uh, it's so easy to adjust to 1176 by just going with the release. You really wanna mess with the release as your uh, first uh, order of business after you get your input dialed in. Go to the release. It's much more noticeable to hear where the release is at than the attack because it's just so fast. Like the, my, the joke I always have about 1176 is it's fast or faster. So that's all an 1176 is, is just like one of the fastest compressors that you can use. So that's a strong suit, but you also have to be aware of that. So go to the release first and you hear the perceivable differences in what it's doing, and then go back to your attack and adjust it for fine tuning. Uh, that's a good place to start. Same deal with this pedal. Uh, same deal, I'd say just crank it, find a good uh, uh, blend of what you want, and then use the uh, use the blend control to dial it uh, in or out. It's This is much more um, uh, kind of versatile to use, but you can honestly get almost a faster sound that's great on the clear comp uh, if you're a guitar player or something like that without having to um, experiment too much. Just mess around with the top controls uh, and you're good to go. So again, this is just such a fun concept to talk about with compression, but very difficult and intangible. Uh, but I hope that the uh, recorded examples help. Let's do one more thing. Uh, let's go to a guitar track. I had some guitar tracks that were uh, that, that I had recorded here. I believe it is this one. And so let's go do the same thing. We're gonna pull up our plugin. We're gonna send this guitar track out to the 1176. So we're gonna do the same thing, set it up to go in and out how we want it. Get a new track ready. So cool trick with the 1176 and one that I really love is to just smash the input super hot so you're getting actual distortion from the unit. You're not even compressing. So how do you do that? How do you set this up to not compress? Well, I see these ratio buttons. Uh, they're obviously all in. If you just engage maybe one, for instance, like the ratio on four, that's a good start. Then if you just gently touch one of the other buttons, you'll notice that none of them are pressed in right now. It basically disengages the compressor from the circuit. Now you're just running signal through the input and output transformers right now. So you're able to use it as a gain device, which sounds awesome. I'd love doing this trick if I need a level boost or just saturation. Super cool trick with it. So let's treat this as a saturator. So for all of you who love saturator plugins, there's not much better than putting it through an 1176 as your new saturation tool. So let's try it out. Here's the guitar. Everything else is muted. Uh, we are going to feed it in here and just hear what it sounds like with this guitar track uh, with some uh, saturation. So let's hear it. So, so here's the initial gain. I'm just gonna crank the gain really quick. So. So obviously you hear how it gets super ragged very quickly. Um, you can use that to great effect uh, based on what you're looking for. Bass in particular sounds awesome when you just want a little bit of hair and your bass signal, crank up the input a little bit and blend it in. So anyways. So here's it uh, without the plugin right now. Check it out, well, going through the uh, um, 76 I should say. And here's it routing through the 176 then. So we'll turn that back on. So say you can just get cool ragged effects there or, or even be more conservative than I am right now and get a uh, different effect. So let's just like do a quick, I'll just do a quick source recording and dial something. <laughs> So I'll just be messing with it while I record so you can hear the ranges. So. It's like you can get completely fuzzed out uh, kind of gross distortion on there or you can kind of dial it back and reach that sweet spot so check it out let's listen to just a quick tidbit of that and we'll see how it sounds <laughs> So here's more distortion. 
and then more still. So you can really kind of saturate things in cool ways. So again, I'm being uh, dramatic with uh, how to use it right now just for effect to show you the range of it, but um, there is a sweet spot on pretty much every source. You can get really, really awesome kind of boosts in levels that need it or just use it as a saturator. So it's a cool little trick. I think everything sounds better passing it through more transformers in my recording chain. So it's a good tool for that. The Lin 76 is ex it's exceptional at that right now. So um, yeah, just a, it's another cool trick you can use. Um, different vocal effects as well. You can use it for vocals and achieve the same results. Uh, basically using the same tools that we talked about today. It's all about their attack and release as a primary um, uh, point of interest there. You gotta adjust that threshold in the right way and then it's kind of easy to go from there. So let me go check over here. Oh, we got, uh, thank you, Katarina, hello. And then Dean Pollock, nice piece of gear, thank you. Uh, I'm a little bit late on that uh, comment right there, uh, but thank you so much, Dean, thanks for tuning in. Uh, in the essence of time, please let me know if we have anything else that you want me to cover on this, but uh, in my final moments of wrapping up, I know compression is a uh, interesting concept and it is very intangible. It's felt a lot of times more than distinctly heard but you can do so much with it. And both of these tools are great, but I haven't brought up the price even, and that was the most fascinating part to me. The Lindell Audio, the Lin 76, I believe it's 399, which is an insane price point to hit for a hardware 1176. Honestly, half the time you're gonna spend a hundred or two bucks for a freaking 1176 plugin. So if it's 400 bucks for hardware, uh, this is a absolute must uh, to your studio if you wanna um, get one. I say get two. I know guys who like want like five or six in a studio, different 1176s so they can do different combinations and stuff. So pick up at least one of these bad boys. They're great. Um, the clear comp as well, I believe it is 299, which is awesome because it's also a versatile studio tool. But 299 for the pedal, 399 for the hardware unit here. And um, uh, this is uh, this holds its own as a studio tool as well. I was feeding tracks out into the pedal, and uh, as long as you have a you know good setup there to get this. Uh, um, impedance set up to feed back into a pedal you can use this as a mixing tool as well so it's very cool um but yeah like i said guys thanks for tuning in compression's tough uh this wasn't the most basic of uh streams there so um hopefully if you know a little bit about compression this can help you use a hardware compressor as well as a pedal uh, but there are limitless uses for these and they are very great tools i think everybody should know how to use a compressor if you uh, are in the modern age of recording right now so hopefully this walkthrough helped and stay tuned for uh, our next Zounds live stream coming up uh, in the next few weeks. So until then, though, guys, uh, thanks as always for tuning in. This is Justin with Zounds, and have a great one.